Kenneth Copeland. Most people are at least familiar with him. Even if they don't know his name, they probably know his face. Hello. We've got a video of Kenneth Copeland we're going to look at today. And I, I must say, um, Kenneth Copeland is one of the few people that I do not have an issue giving the label of heretic. He is not a brother. He preaches... It preaches stuff that is is satanic at, at times. Um, it's just it is prosperity gospel. That's the closest that he gets to the gospel. It's about giving him money. Um, yeah, let's just let's let's get into this video and then we can discuss. You need help feeding your babies. God bless your darling heart then you ought to be helped. But I'm going to tell you something. You need to be tithing off that help. That's your increase. You need to be tithing that. Well, dear Lord, Brother Copeland, I'm in poverty now. I know it. I'm telling you how to get out. That's the gospel. I don't care if you ain't got but two nickels. Give him the first one. Oh, yeah. For he has anointed me to do what? Preach the gospel to the poor. That's what the poor must hear. And in the gospel, giving is at the heart of breaking the curse of poverty. Oh, yeah. Oh. <clears throat> so, first thing. The gospel has nothing to do with tithing. Nothing at all. So <laughs> this the gospel message in its simplest form. Jesus came to earth to die on a cross. Take the punishment for our sin so that we could spend eternity with him. Has nothing to do with tithing, has nothing to do with giving money. Kenneth Copeland uses Christianity as a way to scam people, particularly old women, out of money so that he can live a lavish lifestyle. So let's go into some of these some of these specifics. Um I already said that the the gospel has nothing to do with tithing at all. Um, how about tithing? Like, our, this. Uh, um, so there will probably be some pastors that don't like this. Um, sorry if you're one of them, but I'm. Yeah, I was gonna say, Christians today are not required to tithe. There is no biblical requirement for Christians today to tithe. Tithing is an old covenant thing. I've heard people say, um, Old Testament thing. I've heard people say that, well, that it comes from before the first covenant, and so it still continues now. Okay, realistically, you want to know where tithing starts from. Um, we see it for, for the first time. Um, in Genesis 14, verses 17 through 20. Then after his return from the defeat of... No idea what that says. Um, and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom, went out to meet him at the valley of Shaveh, that is the king's valley, in Melchizedek, uh, king of Salem brought out bread and wine. This is the, like the first communion. Um, now he was a priest of God most high. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth, <clears throat> and blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. He gave him a tenth of all. Abraham gave uh, Melchizedek, <clears throat> which 
is a Christophany. If you're familiar with that, it's a it's either an actual the incarnation of Jesus appearing or a kind of a person that's supposed to be kind of um, either way. That's not on topic. But um, why did Abraham give a tenth? I think the most likely thing, because he's not instructed to, he just does it. I think Abraham sees that these other people around are giving their pagan gods a tenth. And we do have some evidence that this is this was happening. Um, so if they're doing that for their gods, Abraham's like, I'm going to do that for my god. So tithing <laughs> very, very likely has roots in, in paganism. Um, does that mean it's bad? No. <laughs> it's not, but that's the earliest um, evidence that we have of tithing, or the earliest occurrence we have of tithing. Now, a Christian is required to tithe. No, there is. It, you cannot make a biblical argument that Christians today are required to tithe. There is no Bible argument you can make if you hear a pastor giving an argument that you're taking stuff out of context. With that being said, we are called to be cheerful givers. I think even non-believers get the idea of you are draining resources from something, taking resources from something. Just being a decent human being, you should work to fill those back up or try to fill those back up. So as Christians, how much more should we do? Um, we're, we're sitting in the building. We're soaking up the AC. We're drinking the coffee. We're... Um, using the restrooms, sitting on the, the seats of the pews or whatever. So we should be donating back to help, at the very least, cover the cost of what we're using. But if we really believe what we're preaching and being taught, then we should be giving because we want to help further the gospel. We want to help make the, um, the, the church somewhere where people can come in and they can be taught and they can get equipped to go back out to reach more people to bring them in, to be taught, to be equipped, to go back out and reach more people. We should be cheerful givers. We should be giving. Not so that our pastor can have a private jet. So more people can be discipled, so that they can reach more people, so that those people can come in and be discipled, so that they can go out and reach more people. See the process here? Um, yeah, so he, uh, he mentions in this video, I forgot for a second, we were even talking about Kenneth Copeland. He mentions in this video that, um, this is how you, you break the curse of prosperity, but what if prosperity isn't, or break the, the curse of poverty, but what if poverty isn't a curse? Um, being wealthy is not a sign of God's blessing. And not being wealthy is not a sign of not having God's blessing. I think we can see people that are very wealthy that are not <laughs> living right for God. And we can see people that are very poor that are. We can also see people that are wealthy that are living right for God. It's God can provide wealth. Um, God can provide prosperity. But that's not always the case. I would even say there are some people that would not be able to handle that level of wealth. And so God's not going to allow them to get that because his, his, what's more important is that he has their heart. God knows the people. So he would know, Hey, if, if they end up getting a bunch of money, they may not stick with following me. That's the most important thing. So, um, Poverty is not a curse. It's possible to be poor in material things, but rich in spiritual things. We see this in Revelation, in one of the churches, Revelation 2. Um, it actually sp specifically says this. Uh, even Jesus and his disciples were poor. They didn't have wealth. They were traveling around with little. Um. There are many, many situations in which poverty is not a curse. I would say, actually, ooh, kicked my mic. Kenneth Copeland is a prime example of how wealth can actually be a curse. 
I don't think that poverty always is. I think it can be. I don't think the wealth always is. I think it can be. And I think they can both be blessings too. But I, I do not have any reservations on saying this. Um, so I'll say this and we'll end with this. <clears throat> Kenneth Copeland is not a brother. He's not saved. He is simply using Christianity to try to uh, try to con people out of their money to pay for his lavish lifestyle. And we need to, if you know people that are giving money to his ministry, you need to tell them to stop. 